Hi guys, I'm Nicole Fig. Welcome back to my channel. For a while now, I've been wanting to reshoot some of my old boron basic videos that I uploaded a couple of years ago. Specifically, how to hold your boron, how to hold your tipper, and tonal backhand. And the reason is that I put a lot of information into maybe one or two videos, and I just wanted to make three separate videos and just add a lot more detail to hopefully help answer some of the questions that you guys um, have been asking me. Um, and the information that I want to share with you, the tips and tricks, are tips that I learn from mentors, friends, but overall it's pretty much my own experience of what has worked for me and has worked for some of my students. Um, and this may not work for you or you may find a better way of doing them that suits you best, but hopefully it can give you a little bit of guidance. Um, maybe you can take some inspiration from them and change them a little bit just to suit uh, whatever it is more comfortable for you so that you can feel more confident and have more control of the instrument. So this is the last video of this series and is a little bit of information on the tonal hand and this is how I do it. This is a little bit of how I was taught by Jim Higgins and a little bit of how I kind of figure things out myself. And just like there's so many ways of holding the tipper, there is so many ways of doing tonal hand. I don't think that there is a right way of doing it. I think, you know, I, I know friends who play from the top, so this will be their base and they kind of barely move their hand. It's kind of everything is kind of done at the top. My style is more from the bottom to the top. Uh, and I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. Um, but there's some people who barely move their hand at all, some kind of do it with fingers, you know, there are so many different ways of doing it. And I think that figuring out your tonal hand is about getting inspiration or getting ideas or, you know, if, if they share tips or techniques with you from different people that you enjoy and that you, uh, you like the sound that they're making through their drum. Um, and just kind of taking that and then bringing it to yourself and then figuring out what works for you the best and how you can make the sound that you have. Like at first you might not really think of a sound that you want to make, especially if you've never played the drum, but the more you play, the more you figure out, oh, I like that. Um, and maybe I don't like that very much. That's not really for me. Or I'm trying to sound more like this. But what I would suggest is, take a little bit from everything and come up with your own way of doing it um, and to coming up with your own way of producing the sound that you want to make. Uh, this is what has worked for me. I don't know, maybe in a couple of years time I will have a different way of playing or um, I would add on to what I already know. But for now, I'll share with you what I know. For beginners, I explain that my drum is, I kind of divide it into three. So you have one, two, three. And this area will be the bass. So it's just like in, you know, the drum kit, the bass that you do with, with, your, with your foot, that will be the bass. Then in the middle one will be the snare. So it's in the, in the drum kit is the one that it kind of does a lot of the work. It's like the one in between the legs. And then I say that the one at the top is the pop or it will be kind of like more like symbols in you know the traditional drum kit so now you're left with bass snare pop bass snare pop and having that kind of three different areas of the drum can really allow you to organize where those sounds are and of course from the bass to the snare you have all of those you know, um, options that you could do to make more sounds. And then from the snare to the pop, you have all of those sounds that you can make as well. So it's not just three different tones, but to start with, if you don't really know how to get started, having those three basic sounds will really help out. So once you're familiar with those three, then you can think, okay, well, if I have the bass, snare and the drum, I can have that anywhere, starting anywhere in the drum. It doesn't have to be necessarily all the way at the bottom. And that's a little bit more kind of advanced, but just kind of to show you that there are so many possibilities and tones 
that you could do that is not just super basic but then again you might just want to have one or two tones and that will be your style of playing so it just depends what you want to do but i will show you the bass snare and the pop and the way i use my hands i would suggest that you always play depending on the style above your hand or below your hand and i mean that if your bass is here if you're having your hand all the way up here and touching it the opposite direction for your bass um, you're touching below or you're touching above your hand and that you know it's also true for when i'm playing you know different different places in the drum so my first suggestion would be not really to play with your hand completely flat on the skin and not to play on your hand so this is what it sounds like if i play on my hand this is how it would be above my flat hand and this is below my flat hand so you have see that's really dead that's on my hand i know that some Players do play with their hand completely flat on the drum and they might even play a little bit on their hand. Again, there are so many ways of doing it and just because I don't use it doesn't mean that it's necessarily completely wrong. The kind of my way of thinking about it is that if I put my hand completely flat on the skin, it's going to muffle the sound. The same as if my body is kind of touching more of the surface of the skin. If I put my hand completely flat to try to have a base, that's my base, whereas that's my base with my hand away. For the base, I'm just gonna have my hand like this and I'm gonna put it all the way at, at the base, okay? Usually my fingertips, my pinky and the ring finger is the one that is kind of touching the skin very lightly. I'm not really pushing, I'm just touching. Um, you could do that, you could do the whole palm as well if you wanted to like this, but I find that a little bit more awkward than just doing this. And it's very slight, but that's going to change the way it sounds. So this is my bass. It's very relaxed. So you want to open up. And the thing that to kind of keep in mind is that if your position, if your body posture is like this, then it means that you're muting a lot of the sound. You see? I'm not moving my left hand, but because more of my body is in contact with the skin, it sounds muffled. You see? If I go out here, it can boom out. My snare will be somewhere in the middle of the drum. And what I do is I put my hand like so, like that. Now again, if you have uh, the... Um, the bars, this motion might be kind of difficult to go all the way, so you might have to do something like this instead of doing all the way. I tend to press with the midi part and sometimes with the kind of with the side of the pinky. If I'm trying to be very specific on a tone that I want to do, mostly I just use the midi part, okay? So these three fingers are not really touching the skin. Maybe these two a little bit, but not these three. Uh, otherwise, it will be something like that. So you want to open. With this exercise, you kind of want to have the same sound. It's about consistency. So now you have your bass and your snare. You see, that one was higher than the one I did before. That one was closer to the one I did before. So. Try to be consistent with the sounds that you have, otherwise you're going to have You see, then you kind of have, have it all over the place and kind of the point of this is to organize your mind into having specific kind of um, kind of lighthouses, if you want to call them that, to kind of guide you of where the extra tones are in the middle, but you kind of have your specific points that you kind of want to aim at. And that specific point can, can change depending on the tune, depending on the day. It doesn't have to be specifically that same note every single time, because it also depends how your bottom is going to be tuned that day. You know, but you, you kind of want to give yourself reference points at first when you're about to start playing. Both of my mini parts are touching. I forgot to mention that. That's okay too. That I, I do that when I need to push harder, you know. So somewhere around it, 
you know it varies a little bit it's not completely perfect every time but if you're only starting it's the same thing the more comfortable you are the more kind of you can wiggle and you can um, make adjustments to the sound that you want to create but if you're only starting try to be the most um, um, similar every time that you do it so for the pop I use my pointer finger and my thumb and I put them together and it's kind of almost like if I'm pinching like this so if I'm somewhere around here and I push if you notice my my thumb is not down here it's not like this but it's not like that either it's coming closer so what you could do is do like an L shape and then bring it to yourself and you're pushing and you're almost pushing with you're pretty much pushing with kind of the bone the bone here and some of some of the side of the finger the index finger and you're pushing so whenever I'm pushing instead of just pushing with your fingers because that can hurt and that's not really effective I tend to push with my whole arm and I push the more you push and the less space you have with the pop the higher the sound is gonna be If I put those three together, you have And what you want to do is you want to be consistent and try as hard as you can having the same tones for the bass, the snare and the pop. And then you want to go backwards. So away the second pop and now what another thing that you could do for example is do a rundown and try to change your hands so switch so up down up down up down up down up down up down now backwards put them together and that exercise is not necessarily because you're actually gonna go ahead and do that in a session but it's more so that your ear can get trained of what are the possibilities in between those um, reference points that we were thinking of, that we were doing the bass snare pop so now that you have the reference points if you look at some of the grooves that I gave you I usually explain a little bit of how I do the bass always um, you can mix and match so if you were to do Notice I'm just doing bass, snare, snare, bass, snare, snare, and bass. So if you notice, I can I made that groove pretty much with three reference points that I taught you. So it's about kind of understanding your drum and kind of creating a mental map of what is happening over here. So that's kind of the basic um, kind of mental map or reference that I usually give my students, especially beginner students, so that they have a way of starting to incorporate their tonal hand into their grooves. Thinking ahead of the tones that I want to create and then my hand kind of knows already because of that mental map of where to go and the more you do it the better you will get at it having um, those reference points and being able to move around from you know the in-between places and um, 
then getting a little bit more advanced to shifting all of the things that I'm doing into different sections and so on and so forth will kind of give you more control of what you're doing and when it comes to like playing in a session or performing or even just playing for yourself you'll be a bit more specific um, and intentional of the tones that you're doing so rather than just moving your hand it will be very intentional you're you're putting that tone there because it makes sense to put it there because it sounds good because you want it to be there rather than just because it came out which it's its own beauty as well like if you can improvise and just create and kind of create this melody that is just flowing but you could you also have the control of being like no i want a bass here a pop here two basses here and a snare here and that's going to create a certain groove so you can have then the control to say this is what i want or be like let's see what happens but it's more intentional and you can recreate it because you understand the map of your drum. Um, tones are an amazing thing and they... Is, you can do anything with them really, you know? Um, if you would like a video of how I approach playing tunes, like how I approach... If I listen to a tune, what are the things that I look for? Uh, what are the things that... Um, like how I analyze a tune in order to play it, I can do that for you. Um, that's a little bit more advanced, but I hope that at least having these references can help you, especially if you're just starting, just getting started. And don't feel super pressured because you're doing so much. You're putting the right hand and the left hand, and if you are just improvising or if you're just doing the tones, at least you know it's just the tones. But if you're actually doing a groove and you're having to think of what is my left doing? What is my right doing? And the timing and, you know, the tasty and the grooviness of it, it takes a while to get there. So if you're only starting and sometimes you just feel really frustrated, take it slow, bring it down, bring it down to the basics. It's better for you to feel really confident about maybe like one, you know, using two different, the bass and the snare in the jig, and then just sticking with that until you feel really confident. And then you're going to see that having your basics really solidified and really comfortable everything else kind of falls into place so that's it um i think i rambled a little bit but um i hope it helped and i hope that it kind of opens up your mind of possibilities that you can do on the drum and on the tones because it's really it's really it's really wonderful it's really beautiful once you kind of hear it in your minds in your mind's ear if I miss something again or if you have any questions, let me know if there is something specific that you want me to do a video on. Please let me know. Um, I do read the comments and I do try to, you know, make sure that I'm responding to people either on the comments or making a video of it. Um, so yeah, I hope this helped and uh, I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're keeping safe and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.